Okay, let's go ahead and figure out the solution to this nice, interesting algebra word problem. And of course, the first step when we solve any problem in mathematics is to read the problem. So let's go to read this problem, and I'm going to try to read this nice and slow uh, because it can't be a little bit confusing. But let's go ahead and read the problem. It says, what is the greatest possible product of two numbers with a sum of 24? So uh, again, this particular problem can be a little bit confusing if you only read it one time. The key when you're solving any math problem is to read it at least a couple, two, three times so you really absorb what's going on. Now, I don't want to give you too many clues right here because I want to give you a full opportunity to solve this problem all on your own. So if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one moment. And then, of course, we're going to walk through this step by step. Now, I did say that uh, I'm going to be using algebra to solve this problem, but I made this problem uh, with easy, of no easy enough numbers where you can kind of reason through it. But uh, imagine if, um, you know, these numbers were more challenging, right? So how would you solve this? Anyways, we're going to get to all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. It really is my true passion to help as many people as I possibly can learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time with mathematics. Please do not give up hope because there is a path forward. But uh, really, the main thing you need to be successful in math is great math instruction. So whoever you're learning math from or whatever you're learning math from, you got to understand what's going on because math is a technical subject and there's nothing worse than sitting in a classroom and being totally confused for an hour, right? And at the end of that hour being like, I don't understand anything. Well, you're not going to uh, be able to kind of progress forward. So, you know, if you're in that kind of situation, so you got to change it up. The way I like to teach math is to explain things in easy to understand language so everybody can get what's going on without watering things down, okay? In other words, without kind of leaving out critical parts of what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for, something that involves math, things like G the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. You absolutely need to have a great pair of math notes to study from. Okay, and hopefully you're taking your own awesome notes. But if you're not, start improving your notes, but you can use mine in the meantime. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so interesting uh, problem here. Let me read it one more time. So it says, what is the greatest possible product? Now, let's just kind of give you some clarification here just in case you're confused. What does this word product mean? Uh, well, pro the product is the result of multiplication, right? So the product of two and three is six. Okay, so the product of these two numbers, two and three, is six. So the product, again, is a result of multiplication, right? So hopefully you know what the word sum is. But let's take a look at the answer right now. The answer is 144. Okay, but what is the question? Let's go back over here. What is the greatest possible product? Okay, so the greatest possible product in this particular situation is 144 with two different numbers that add up to 24, or two numbers, excuse me, that add up to 24. All right, so again, the answer is 144. So how did you do? Okay, well, if you got this right, even if you didn't use algebra, let's go ahead and celebrate your success by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can celebrate uh, with your family and friends and say, hey, I figured out that guy's uh, little um, YouTube math problem today. You know, I feel pretty good about myself, as you should. So 
And the thing is this, I'm going to be using algebra, right, to solve this problem. But if you kind of reason through it, that's still good. That's the, that's the key to getting better at math. Just don't look at a problem and be like, well, I don't really know what to do. I don't know the algebra. Try to use common sense. See if there's another path forward to figure things out because oftentimes there is. But what I'm going to be talking about here is very important in terms of uh, those of you out there that are studying algebra. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and get into the problem. And uh, again, we are dealing with the word prompt. So the first three steps in a word prompt is to read the prompt, then read the prompt again, and then really read that problem one more time to understand what is going on. So we're looking for the greatest possible product. That is the question. What is the greatest possible product? So we're looking for the end result of uh, two numbers being multiplied by uh, one another, right? So uh, you can't have a product with just one number, right? So you need two or more numbers. So here we're dealing with two numbers, and we know that these two numbers, when we add them up, is 24. So what we want to do is kind of set up some, uh, you know, way to model this situation. And, you know, again, we're going to be using algebra. So for if, you know, if you see this problem and you're in an algebra course, there's a good chance that you're going to be using algebra to solve the problem. And if you're going to be using algebra to solve a problem, that's going to involve using variables, right? So we want uh, variables to represent these uh, unknown numbers. So let's go ahead and uh, let x uh, equal one number. Okay, so that's what I did. Of course, you could say I already wrote the work out here. So pick a number, let's say x. That'll uh, be one of the numbers involved uh, in this situation. Okay, now I know that the sum of these two numbers is 24. So if x is one number, I'm going to let 24 minus x be the other number. Okay, now let's just think about it here. Uh, if you have one number plus this other number, right, 24 minus x, if I add these up, it's got to be 24. So the x is right here, cross cancel x and negative x go away. So 24 um, is equal to 24. Just to be this uh, extra clear about it, if x is, um, oh, I don't know, 16, all right, and two numbers add up to 24, what um, is the other number? Well, it's going to be 24 minus 16, right? So, of course, that would be 8. All right, so this is why we have 24 minus x as this expression. So we have one number, x, and we have this other number, 24 minus x. These are two representations of the two numbers involved, but we have to look at this part of the problem now. What is the greatest possible product? Well, we have two um, expressions for these numbers. There's one number and another number. The product is going to be these two numbers being multiplied by one another. So let's take a look at what the product would look like. Okay, so this would be the product. So here is uh, one number and here is our other number, 24 minus x. That would be the product. So we're trying to find the greatest maximum product uh, with, of course, our restriction that uh, both of these numbers cannot, um, the sum of them is 24. So the way to do this is let's go ahead and actually multiply this x in here. If you um, kind of are looking at this, you're saying, you know, this kind of reminds me of a quadratic equation. That is excellent because that's exactly what this is. We can distribute this x here and, and right here. So we'll end up with 24x minus x squared. And we can look at the graph of this, right? We could just throw on a y right there and call this uh, an equation, a quadratic equation or quadratic function, but basically we can see a graph of what's going on. So this would be the graph of what would uh, represent the product of these two numbers. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph here. Now you don't technically have to graph this um, equation to figure this out, okay? But I'm doing this because you have to understand the concept behind this. So here is our equation. Okay, then remember this minus x squared plus 24x uh, is the product of these two numbers, right? So we want to see this graphically. So graphically, if you graph minus x squared plus 24x, if you don't know how to graph a parabola, you all, you know, you, you're definitely going to um, need to learn this, so especially if uh, you're taking like algebra one 
courses like that. By the way, if you need any of this, uh, any help with any of these topics I'm talking about, I'm going to direct you towards my Algebra 1 course. If you happen to be in Algebra 2, you can check this out. Uh, check out my Algebra 2 course as well or College Algebra Pre-Calculus. I teach all these concepts within those courses. But here, I can go ahead and find some critical points, i.e. the solutions uh, the real number of solutions to this parabola. Now, if I'm talking in a language, you're like, okay, I'm completely lost. That is a good indication that you need to brush up on this stuff. Uh, but again, if you're at the Algebra 1 level, you should be understanding what I'm talking about here. All right, so now here is the factors of this, right? Uh, this minus x squared plus 24x is when I multiply this x in here. But if I wanted to solve this uh quadratic equation, okay, uh, what I want to do is set it equal to zero, and I can set each factor equal to zero, so x is equal to zero, and then 24 uh, minus x is equal to zero, and I would end up with these two real number solutions, and you can see them right here, so there is zero, that's one real number solution. A real number solution is where uh, the graph, okay, of your function is crossing through the x-axis. So the, this parabola is crossing through at 0 and 24. These would be what we call real number solutions, roots or zeros, but basically they are real number solutions. So again, I'm talking about a lot of stuff here uh, that, you know, you should kind of, you know, be like, oh yeah, I understand what you're saying. And if the worst thing, you could, uh, the, the worst way to learn math is to be like, okay, I'm just going to learn how to, you know, solve this problem, but not try to connect the dots. Then you're never going to really be able to master mathematics altogether, right? So we are talking about different topics here. Again, if you're lost with anything, check out my Algebra 1 course. Okay, so, uh, so here are the two points that this parabola, okay, will cross through, and this is a negative x squared situation, so that means I'm gonna have an upside down u uh, situation like this as my parabola. So my parabola is gonna look something like so, but I'm going to have a maximum right here, okay? Now remember, this graph represents what? It's representing the product, right? Remember, the product of these two numbers, x times 24 minus x, this is representing the product, okay? So where is the greatest product of these two numbers? Well, it would be located right there, right? So right where this x value's at, okay, right there, so here's zero, here's 24, maybe this is like 12, Right where this is at, that's where that maximum product is going to be. So what we want to do is figure out this point, and that point happens to be the what? Well, that point happens to be the vertex. Okay, so this is the vertex of this parabola, which of course is a specific xy point. So all we have to do is locate the vertex. We don't even have to locate the entire vertex. We just have to locate the x coordinate of this vertex, and that is going to tell us uh, all the information we need to know to find the maximum product. So hopefully you're making, or this uh, makes sense to you. By the way, what we're looking at here um, has to, uh, to do uh, with some of the, the concepts that you learn in calculus, finding maximums and minimums of functions and whatnot. We can uh, use other tools in calculus like the first derivative and all that's kind of good stuff. So those of you that have an interest in calculus, we're actually kind of doing uh, some of these concepts. It's not using calculus. We're solving a problem that could we could easily use calculus to solve. Anyways, thought I'd bring that up because, uh, again, these problems are very kind of common. They're a little bit more advanced, of course, in calculus, but basically the same thing. We're trying to find this maximum point. So how do we do that? Well, how do you find the vertex of a parabola? Hopefully you remember, but if you forgot, there is a formula to find the vertex of a parabola. So when you have a quadratic equation, okay, uh, which of course the graph of a quadratic equation is a parabola written in standard form ax squared plus bx plus c, the x coordinate of the vertex is minus b over 2a. So here we have a, b, c. Um, of course, we would use these a, b, c's if we were going to uh, use a quadratic formula, but we're not using a quadratic formula, so we just have to figure out what a and b are, because that's all we need for this formula here. So what is a? Well, right here, the coefficient in front of the x squared, which would be what? Negative 1. So a is negative 1, and b is what? 24. So literally, we just have to plug in 
these pieces of information into here and do the math. That's going to be very, very easy. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So minus B over 2A is going to be uh, minus uh, 24, right? Because that is B, right? So there's 24 over 2 times A or 2 times uh, negative 1 is our A. So this is going to be negative 24, a negative of 24, negative 24, 2 times negative 1, negative 2. So we have a negative divided by a negative is positive. So there you go. That is 12. So X is 12, right? But what does that represent? Well, that is one of the numbers, okay? That is one of the numbers. So if 12 is one of the numbers and both of the numbers add up to 24, well, 24 minus 12 is also going to be 12. So one number is uh, 12 and the other number is 12. So the maximum product is going to be what? Those two numbers uh, multiplied together, 12 times 12, which, of course, is 144. Okay, so this is how we solve this particular problem, but I think what makes this problem interesting is that we get to use a lot of different um, tools here, okay? We uh, get to use quadratic equations, quadratic functions, and we get to kind of, um, you know, look at a model, that of, uh, an algebraic model that represents the product of something, and this would be a nice little introduction to some of the concepts that uh, we use in calculus, okay? Let me just kind of go over here real quick just to wrap this up. So in calculus, you have different functions that you can look at. Let's suppose you had a company and you had some sort of profit function, the profit of this company, or like, okay, uh, the profit of this company is represented by some crazy formula, but let's say graphically we can look at this formula and this formula is doing whatever, right? Well, let's actually make it more like this, okay? Something like so. So what we want to do is find the point of maximum profit, right? And maybe the input value here, X, represents the number of employees or maybe the number of hours you run a particular machine, okay? What would be the most, uh, you know, effective? What would produce the most effect, uh, most um, uh, profit, right? So this would be calculus. And to find the maximum, sometimes we're not dealing with quadratic equations, but we might be dealing with polynomials or other type of functions. So what we want to do is find something called the first derivative and figure out what their slope is zero, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I got to stop myself because I just get too excited about mathematics. And hopefully this pumps you up to say, you know what? I am going to learn calculus one day. And uh, hopefully you will. If you do um, have entry, any interest in taking calculus, I strongly suggest that you walk towards that path. So basically... Uh, let's wrap it up um, uh, with this little final thought. If you are going to take calculus, if you want to take calculus, the basic uh, sequence of courses is you want to, um, and I'm just speaking at the high school level, you want to do Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and then you got to get that pre-calculus in. That is extremely important. I offer all these courses. But after you're um, finished with pre-calculus, then you can be ready for the big leagues, which would be, of course, calculus. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap this up. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.